Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us. This is Conservation in the Classroom, where you get the chance to interact with one of our very own experts here at WWF. My name is Kate and I will be the host today. Before we get started, we wanna invite everyone that's watching to join in by visiting that pigeonhole website that you see on your screen there. Once you get over to the site, go ahead and enter the code elephant and answer the word cloud question. We wanna know what comes to mind when you you think of elephants so one to two words of what you think of when you think of elephants go ahead and enter your answer there and at a, in a few minutes we'll take a look at what some of the most popular answers were also if you haven't done so already make sure to introduce yourself in the chat section with your name and where you're from you will also use that area to drop any questions that you have about elephants for our expert at the end of the presentation we will have a question and answer session using the questions you submitted so please be sure to stick around for that as well as more opportunities to participate in some <coughs> pigeonhole questions so I am very happy today to introduce our featured presenter. His name is Boz Hybrex. He is the Director of African Species here at WWF. Boz is here today to share some fascinating facts about African elephants, including what they use their tusks for and what makes their poop so important. So we're also gonna take a look at what makes African elephants in trouble right now and what we can do to help them. So before we get started, Boz, do you wanna say hi to everybody? Hi everybody, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. I am extremely happy to share my passion for African elephants with you and I can't wait to answer your questions. Okay, great. So before we dive in, let's take a quick look and see what people had to say they thought of when they think of African elephants. What word comes to mind? Boz, can you see the screen there? I can. Okay, it looks like big is pretty popular. We got trunks, ears, endangered, a lot of good words. I think that's a perfect segue the, to lead us into our session here today. So without further ado, Boz, the floor is all yours. If you wanna go ahead and share your screen and take it away. Great. Super well, <clears throat> again, everybody, thanks so much. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, African elephants, um, but before we do so, let me first quickly introduce myself. So my name is Bas Huibrecht and I work for World Wildlife Fund uh, based here in uh, Washington DC in our headquarters of the United States office and I'm the director of African Species Conservation. So uh, my uh, passion has become my job uh, and uh, the, fo the species we focus on at WWF uh, are mainly our flagship species are uh, African elephants, uh, great apes, such as gorillas and chimpanzees and, um, and rhinos. So <clears throat> maybe before we dive into the elephants, a little bit about me. Um, so I'm originally from the Netherlands, as you can see here, the windmills, typical Dutch landscape, where I grew up until uh, my university days. And from a small kid onwards, I already knew that I wanted to end up my life roaming around in wilderness areas and ideally being with the world's largest mammals. Um, so I started to specialize in my university days to, to end up in the tropical forests of the world. And I always wanted to end up in jungles where there would be elephants and other big mammals. So that is what finally brought me to the Congo Basin region. If you can see here, this is, uh, this is me in the front there with my colleagues, uh, Baka Pygmies uh, uh, from Gabon in the, in, in the Congo Basin region. This is about 23 years ago uh, where I started working for a World Wildlife Fund. And we are actually in the north of that country um, where at the time was a huge forest, which was at that time completely unknown in terms of what animals were living there. So this was the first survey that we did to basically try and see um, uh, how many elephants were in that forest. And as you will hear later in this presentation, for instance, in, a, in forest, you can't really see elephants. So trying to count those elephants, you do that by counting their poop and thereby estimating the number of elephants you have in that area. 
So why are elephants so amazing? I'm, I'm sure you will know already a lot about elephants. Well, who doesn't? Uh, so first of all, they are the biggest land mammal. Um, they can weigh up to 6.6 .6 tons and measuring up to 10 feet at the shoulder. Um, they both have tusks. Uh, as you can see here, this is a, uh, a male African forest elephant on the coast in Gabon walking along the beach. Um, <clears throat> so both males and females have these tusks in African elephants, which is not the case with Asian elephants where only the males have tusks. Um, they also, um, something spectacular about elephants is their hearing. They can't see very well, but they mostly communicate with each other by um, vocalizing, by talking to each other. You can hear that, uh, that those high trumpets you hear, but the mostly thing that they use, especially to communicate with each other over long distances is that famous elephant rumble. Uh, some of those rumbles are two octaves lower than the human ear can hear. And those low sounds, they re resonate over long distances and they can communicate to each other distances up to 2.5 miles away. And in good circumstances, so if it's not too humid and not much wind, it can even go up to six miles. Six miles, they can hear each other. They can also hear each other through their feet. They have very, very sensitive feet and they can hear each other approaching over long distances. Um, I mean, uh, there is so much to say about elephants, but another one to, to, to maybe to share with you is their memory. They can recognize so many friends and relatives when they haven't seen each other for a long time. They remember diseased loved ones. They remember where they died and sometimes go back to those places um, to, uh, to, commemorate, uh, to commemorate their lives. When they see each other after a long time, they greet each other uh, with special greeting ceremonies and um, and loud trumpeting and, and sort of dancing around. So elephants are really, really quite amazing animals. So where do African elephants live? Uh, here you see on the map on your left, uh, you see the continent of Africa um, and they live currently in 27 countries along the African continent. Um, if you see on the map on the right, you see those dark brown spots those are the places where elephants are still known to live. Um, and there is about 400, a little bit over 400,000 elephants left um, in the wild. Um, and they are classified as, um, as vulnerable under uh, their, let's say, um, endangered listing. Uh, so where do elephants live in terms of, let's say, what habitats do they use? Well, most of you know about this. They live in savannas. Um, you actually have two different subspecies of African elephants. You have the savanna elephant or bush elephant and the African forest elephant. The savanna elephant here, you can see it, um, is actually a little bit bigger uh, than his uh, closest relative, the forest elephant. Um, so savannas, very well known from all the nature documentaries and sometimes also safaris some, some of you have been on but they can also live in deserts, desert adapted elephants. They have, for instance, bigger feet so that they don't sink away in dunes and they can, they can roam over long distances, mainly in, look, in, in the look for food and water. And then my favorite, the forest elephant. This elephant lives only in the deep jungles of the Congo Basin region in Africa. So now to the good things about elephants. Elephants are extremely important for nature. Um, the first thing they do, which makes them so important, is they eat so much. As you can imagine, an elephant that size, um, he can eat up to 200 or 400 pounds of food a day and can drink up to 50 gallons a day, which is like this, as, as much as, uh, let's say, the size of your bathtub. Um, and while eating, when, because an, an elephant is a herbivore. So an elephant needs to spend 12 to 18 hours a day feeding. And elephants eat mostly grasses, shrubs, twigs, um, herbs, fruit, and almost 50% of what they eat, they don't digest, that actually they poop it out again. 
So as you can imagine, eating up to 400 pounds a day, half of that is not digested. That means a lot, a lot of poop every day. So they can poop up to 10 times a day. And you can see here on that picture along a road in the Congo Basin, how such an elephant dung, as it is called, looks like. And if you take a closer look at that dung, you'll see why they are so important. Here, you can see an elephant dung a couple of weeks after it has been deposited by the elephant. And you can see all the seedlings growing in there. Seedlings of all types of plant species that the elephant has been eating. So can you imagine if you are a plant and you want your seedling to grow, what better place to find is a really nice, humid, nutrient-rich pile of dung, which is deposited somewhere in sunlight, far away from the shade under your own tree. So elephants are extremely important for ecosystems as seed dispersers to make sure that plants can grow in best conditions and have the best fertilizer ever to start their young lives. Elephants are also very important gardeners of the forest by breaking up vegetation. Since they eat so much and they are so heavy, they push down trees, so they clear forest and they create openings for other plants to grow. Um, <clears throat> and again, um, also they are very important, their dung for all types of critters that live in them and feed on that dung or lay their larvae in that dung. The other important, uh, amazing thing about elephants is their tusks. You can see here on the right, um, those tusks, they are actually uh, incisors that have grown out of their mouth uh, and they can become really big. They can become as big as a, as, as a tall human being. And their tusks, they use them for all types of purposes. They use them to dig up things, sometimes to dig for water, or here you see in that picture on the left, you see that sort of hole in the ground. Um, elephants, like all mammals, including ourselves, we need all types of minerals like salt and, and calcium and these kind of things, which are uh, not easy to find for an elephant in, uh, in its vegetary dinner uh, uh, um, diet. So it looks for those minerals very often in clay and in dirt. And here you see this big hole uh, that has been uh, dug by elephants uh, who eat that clay in search of those minerals. So that's another important reason why they have those big tusks as tools. They can also use them to rip bark of trees. Sometimes they even use them to fight each other, especially big male elephants in competition for females, or sometimes even to rest their trunk on it. Um, so they are very important for those elephants. Unfortunately for those elephants, human beings like their tusks as well. And human beings, us, we like those tusks because they are made of ivory. And people like to buy ivory for all types of things. Nowadays, they are mainly bought to make beautiful ivory statues or jewelry or bracelets. And currently, most of the demand for that ivory comes from Asia, where the biggest market is in China. Before, the most of the de demand for ivory came from Europe, where, where the elephant tusks were transformed into piano keys or billiard balls or things like that. So nowadays, although killing of elephants is illegal, at least to sell their ivory, the international trade in ivory is closed up to 30,000 elephants are killed every year in Africa for the illegal international trade in their ivory. If you can imagine, only about 100 years ago, there were over a million elephants in Africa. And nowadays, there is only about 400,000 elephants left. So the illegal international trade in ivory is the biggest threat to the survival of those elephants. Here you see an example of bracelets that have been made uh, of their tusks. Uh, this is a, a picture taken in an ivory market uh, in Thailand. Uh, so again, although it is illegal, it is very often not well controlled or regulated. Um, 
So as World Wildlife Fund or as a conservationist like I am, what are we trying to do to help range states in Africa to protect their elephants? Well, first and for all, you have to work with the rangers and the local communities around those elephant uh, places to protect those, play, uh, those elephants from poaching. Here you see an example where you have rangers in a, in a vehicle uh, surveying the protected area where those elephants are. And on top of that vehicle, you see a camera. That is a camera um, that WF has donated to those rangers in partnership with the, with, the, with, the, with the company here in the US. It's a night vision camera. It actually can see heat. So at night, this camera can see animals, but can also see human shapes. And that is how those rangers own the night. They see things that poachers can't see. So they can see those poachers and direct rangers to arrest them. So I can show you now here maybe quickly a little shot. This is like a shot taken from the vehicle that has that camera. And there you see on your left in that, in that red corner, you see that poacher walking away. And in the, in, the green, uh, in the green place, that is the rangers walking behind him. And it is the car with the camera that is telling the rangers where to go to catch those posters, the, those poachers. And here he comes, here he's trying, he was trying to hide between, behind that tree. But yeah, that camera sees everything. And there they go, there they go running after that poacher. And I think he's, they're gonna get him really quick. He's trying to run away very fast, but this is pitch dark. So that poacher doesn't see anything. And there, there they got that poacher. So that's one thing that is indeed, let's say the protection of elephants. Another main issue with the protection of elephants nowadays is the African continent starts to become very populated with humans. It is estimated that by 2050, the African human population will double from the current levels. So all those people, they need to build houses somewhere. They need to plant their crops somewhere. They need to uh, trans they need transport, so railways, uh, highways. And many of that infrastructure built by people are going to be built in elephant habitat. And if it's not well thought of, that will create conflicts between people and elephants. So here you can see two examples. Uh, on the top there you see an elephant uh, <clears throat> looking for water and going into that water reservoir that has been built. In, in this case, he doesn't break it, but very often elephants to get the water, they will break it. Or on your left, you see this big bull elephant walking around this corridor where he has been walking for his whole life and generations of, of, of his, uh, his ancestors before him. And there he finds his little house. So what is WF doing about that? Um, one of the things we do is to better understand the spatial needs of elephants. So where do they go in, in search for water and food throughout the year? Because elephants need, as you can imagine, a lot, a lot of space. Uh, to find uh, to find these um, these goods for them. So here you see a picture in front. It's uh, Robin Naidu, who is the chief scientist on our wildlife team at WWF, with a team of of, of local experts. They have um, tranquilized an elephant, and on its around its neck, they have put a GPS collar. So when that elephant wakes up and starts to go about his normal business, it will send a signal to a satellite. And we can thereby monitor where that elephant goes where. Um, and putting those colors on many, many elephants at the same time, you can start to map out their spatial needs. And mapping out those spatial needs, if you then go then to decision makers or you go to farmers and you say, well, you don't see any elephant here today, but if you come back here in a couple of months, elephants will pass through here. So you better not put your road here or you better not put your agricultural field here because they will destroy it. So another thing we do is to make sure that when elephants come near humans, that the humans are protected from those elephants and the elephants protected from people. So one of the things we can do, for instance, with their poop is they people can collect that poop and then they mix it with chili. If there is something elephants really don't like, it is chili. So you mix that poop with chili, you make it into these balls, 
which they call chili bombs. And when elephants come near to, uh, to people's houses or to people's uh, agricultural plantations, you put light to that, to that dung pile full with chili and the smoke with the chili pepper then gets into the air. And the moment an elephant smells it, he or she will run away as fast as they can. Another thing they use to chase away elephant is bees. That's another thing elephants really don't like. Another thing you can do with elephant, with elephant poop, when you dry it and wash it, they, people make paper out of it. So here, for instance, you have an elephant notebook that you can buy. Can you imagine what a cool gift that is to have your own notebook made of elephant poop? And at the same time, very often, if you buy those things, that goes back to, uh, to protection efforts of those elephants. So how can you, I mean, uh, being there in, in your classroom or now we are all at home, how can you basically help uh, protect elephants yourself from, from where you are when you're not, let's say, a ranger in Africa doing the, the, the work in the, on, in the field? Well, the first thing can, you can do is, uh, is you can make sure that you buy eco-friendly products. Uh, so that means products uh, that don't cause deforestation for where those elephants live. So you have, for instance, for timber, you can buy certified timber um, <clears throat> or palm oil. You can look for certified palm oil to make sure that the products you buy don't contribute to the destruction of the elephant's habitats. The other thing we talked about is you can be aware of the illegal wildlife trade. Make sure that nobody you know buys ivory from elephants, not only because it's illegal, but by buying ivory, you know that that ivory came from an elephant that was killed. And then just spread the word, the word. make people enthusiastic about uh, elephant conservation, about the need of elephants to, um, uh, as guardians of those ecosystems. Without elephants, those ecosystems will become much poorer and much less risk, uh, rich. So tell it to people, don't buy ivory, uh, protect nature, um, and, uh, and wherever you can, maybe also one day you can go on a safari and by going on a safari, choose a good operator to make sure um, that, um, that, that, your, that your, your visit uh, contributes to the protection of the place you visit. Or you could, for instance, uh, help start a fundraiser uh, to protect uh, elephants and nature. Uh, there is an example uh, where, you can, uh, where you can do that on pandanation.org. So there is always you can uh, you can do it uh, on your on yourself, um, and yeah, I mean, thank you so much. This was uh, basically what I wanted to share with you, and I very much look forward to um, to um, to your questions. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Boz. I think all of us learned a ton about African elephants. And before we get started with the question and answer portion, I just wanna remind everyone to put your questions into that chat box that you see there on your screen so we can be sure to incorporate your question. Boz, if you wanna stop sharing your screen here, before we get started on the questions, I do want to invite everyone back over to that pigeonhole website. Um, there are two more questions on there for you to answer. One is a poll question. We want to know what action you will agree to commit to in order to help save African elephants. So what will you do to do your part? And the other question is a trivia question that we want to see how many of you can get right. So we want to know what is the closest relative to an elephant? So go ahead and put what you think the answer is into that question as well. And once we are through our question and answer portion, we will take a visit back and see what everyone said. Okay. So, Boz, how are you feeling? You ready for some questions? Yay. Okay. Our first question here is from Luke, who wants to know how strong is an elephant tusk? Well, that's a very good question, Luke. So one of the reasons people like to buy ivory, it is because it is so strong. So if you buy a, a beautiful bracelet and you let it fall on the ground, it doesn't break very quick. So yeah, I mean, how strong is it? I've seen, for instance, elephants push away big vehicles full of people, pushing them with their, with their, with their tusks and their trunk against the tree. Uh, so yes, you can say that the, those tusks are really, 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 really strong. 
Okay, Sadie would like to know what are their predators? Um, since elephants are the biggest mammal, they fortunately for them, they don't have many predators. There's only a few places in Africa where um, um, lions have become specialized elephant killers. So there is a few prides of lions in Africa that do attack um, elephants. But yeah, as you can imagine, they can't really attack a very, very big adult elephant. Uh, so, but they can attack their babies. And that is why elephants always, uh, when they are in a herd, when they are being uh, threatened by, by lions, they, uh, they go and stand in a circle with the big females um, uh, in the outer circle and the babies in the middle to protect them. I would imagine even a lion would have to be pretty brave to approach an elephant. Um, okay, yeah. Canyon Wren wants to know, where would be the best place to go and see African elephants in Africa? Yes, there is a good question. Um, there is many places where you can see them. Um, so if it's for your first time and you're, you don't wanna, it, it has to be a little bit like easy. A good country to start is a country like South Africa or another good country to start your first safaris is Kenya. Um, they have um, very beautiful parks to visit with good facilities and very good guides. Uh, so those are two countries that I would recommend. Another country, uh, which is definitely dear to uh, to uh, to us is is Namibia, which has beautiful um, um, landscapes as well. And especially since a lot of elephants in Namibia live on uh, lands that are owned by communities, so they're not only in national parks, but they are on land managed by the communities themselves. So if you go and visit those places uh, by going into an hotel there. Or, uh, or in a safari, or you, um, you are with a guide that directly contributes also to uh, local development of those communities. So that is definitely what I would recommend. Okay, those are some great answers. Our next question comes from Luke, who wants to know, how exactly does elephant dung help grow plants? Well, uh, first of all, so in, in the dung itself are all the seeds from the plants that the elephant eat. So since uh, an elephant dung uh, is very rich in nutrients, like in minerals and, and other stuff, that is what those seedlings need to grow. Um, so in, in that elephant dung, you have basically all the ingredients for a small seed to start to grow. And secondly, uh, the elephant takes that, that seed far away from its mother plant and puts it somewhere which is very often an ideal place for that plant to grow. So it has both the nutrients and the environment where the elephant puts that seed for its best chance of survival. Okay, let's see. Our next question is from Brody. Wants to know, are elephants related to woolly mammoths and mastodons? Yes, they are. They are. They are very closely related. And they're, they're, it's their ancestors. So uh, very, very well done. Okay, next is from Kathleen, uh, wants to know how long a young elephant is dependent on its parent? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, a very interesting question. So first of all, elephants, as you can imagine, they take a long time to learn everything they need to learn to become independent. So uh, a female elephant only gets a baby every four to five years. And the baby stays not only with its mother, but stays with the herd, so the whole family group. Um, for the females, they stay with that family group their whole lives. It's only the boys, the moment they become into puberty and they start to become a little bit nasty to their brothers and sisters, and then the mother says, you just go away. So it's the boys that leave when they are maybe like, a, at 12, 30, 14 years old, um, and the girls stay with their mothers their whole lives. So in terms of real dependence, it is as long as they really drink milk, which is uh, more than two years. Uh, so, but yes, I mean, they need years and years of learning from their mother, uh, from, the, from their aunts uh, to understand uh, what you can eat, what you can't eat, how to defend yourself, and also where to go uh, to find that food and that water. 
That was a great question. Um, our next one is from AIG, wants to know, can elephants swim? Yes, elephants can swim really well and they can swim uh, sometimes over big distances. Um, I've been around elephants in, in a boat many times when they were swimming. Uh, so they, their, their trunk is the thing that we didn't really talk about, but their trunk is also that amazing tool they have. So since they are so big and heavy, they almost completely sink on the water, but they have their, their trunk sticking out to, uh, to make sure they can, they can easily breathe. So yes, good question. And yes, they do swim. Wow. Um, next is from Bee Lady Caroline wants to know, how do they use bees to scare elephants away? Okay, so talking about again the, the elephant's trunk, the elephant trunk of is, is very very sensitive. Um, so that is where it it, it smells with its trunk, it, it takes uh, its food with its trunk. So there's all these nerve ends in the inside of the trunk. What an elephant definitely tries to avoid at all cost is to be stung inside its trunk. Uh, although it has a thick skin, in the inside of its trunk it doesn't have a thick skin. Um, so. That is why elephants are afraid of bees, especially African bees can be uh, quite aggressive uh, and their sting can be quite uh, painful. Uh, so <clears throat> that's why they are uh, afraid of them. So when they hear bees, uh, they will definitely run away. So what people do is, uh, is basically they try to kill two birds with one stone is one, you have bees. So with holding bees, you get honey. So that's good, that's, uh, that's uh, for, people in rural areas in Africa, that's a good uh, uh, income generating activities. And secondly, those bees uh, will chase away the elephants. So very often they do, uh, like say from one hive to another, they attach ropes so that an elephant walks around and touches that rope by touching the rope, it touches the beehive, the beehive starts to move, the bees in the beehive become angry and then they start getting out of their hive and then they make their noise and the elephant goes like, oh no. That's fascinating that something so small could scare something so big. <laughs> okay, Leo would like to know how long are elephants' tails? Elephants' tails. Yeah, so you have the tail itself. Uh, let's, how long is that? Uh, like I, I'm, I'm a European, so that's maybe, can be a, maybe half a meter. So like a, a bit bigger than your, twice your, your computer screen. Uh, but then they only also have very long hair on their tails. Uh, so that hair can also be like this. And unfortunately for elephants, people also like to use their hair of their tails to make bracelets of. So another thing, never buy elephant uh, bracelets made of elephant hair because also that comes from dead elephants. Our next question is from Evan and Ivy. I, I love this question. They wanna know why do elephants not like the smell of chili? And if you know what smells they do like. Mm. I don't really know. I, I never really ask an elephant why they don't like chili, but I <laughs> guess it comes from the same fact that, that their trunks are so sensitive. So um, for instance, if you would have, uh, uh, I don't know if you've ever been near to your parents when they make like a, a, a a dish with chili and you have by accident you get chili on your hands and then by accident you put it in your nose or by accident you touch your eye it really hurts it irritates so that is what happens with elephants so if they sniff that chili and it comes into that sensitive trunk in their nose actually the, the trunk is their nose it hurts like it would hurt with us and since their their smell is so much better developed than human smell uh, yeah, it, it triggers really a, a painful feeling for elephants. Uh, and what they do like, oh man, uh, elephants like so much, but uh, I mean, they, they, they do like the, the nutritious food. I mean, if you have like a, a nice mango or a, a watermelon, um, oh man, they, they, that smell, they would definitely, they would definitely go crazy if they smell that. So they're big fans of, of watermelons and mangoes, not so much chili peppers. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> um, our next question from Lillian is, what is the difference between African elephants and Asian elephants? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, so uh, Asian elephants are a little bit smaller than African elephants. 
And the reason for that, well, as I just said with African forest elephants versus savanna elephants, Asian elephants mainly live in forests. Uh, as you can imagine, living in a dense tropical jungle, having being very big and having big ears and big tusks, uh, is not really uh, easy to walk around in that, in, in thick jungle. So they are a little bit smaller, their ears are a bit smaller, their tusk size is a little bit uh, uh, different. Uh, only the males have tusks versus, uh, uh, versus the African elephants have the females and the males have tusks. Um, they also have a little bit more hair on their body. So they also a little bit sort of cute looking in that sense. Their ears are a bit more round. So um, that, that again, um, they get, don't get stuck in the, the thick vegetation. And those are a couple of, let's say, differences between those two species. Okay, great. Our next one comes from Coco, who wants to know, why do people still buy ivory when they know it's illegal and hurts elephant populations? Yeah, that is a, that is a, a very good question. Um, and there is many answers to that. Um, for some people, they don't know. So, although it is hard to believe, but many people still think that uh, ivory comes from the teeth of elephants um, and uh, they drop those uh, teeth and they grow new ones. So people just pick up those uh, tusks or those teeth uh, and they sell it legally and there is so no elephant dies because of the, of, of, of the, of the ivory. So that's one thing. So uh, you need to do a lot of education and awareness raising to make sure that people understand um, where ivory comes from. Um, Secondly, there is also people that, uh, strangely enough, don't care. They, they just think it is uh, having something from such a powerful animal, uh, even if it has to die because of, of what you want to buy, it makes you stronger, it gives you uh, more power. Uh, so there is this superstitions around uh, the prestige to have something of a very endangered animal. Um, so uh, to those type of people, uh, it is not only making them aware that it is illegal, uh, but you also need to target those people by basically telling them it is actually totally not cool to have it. You are actually a bit of a loser to buy it. So those people you look at, at like say their peers, like other people in their uh, in their work environment or their friends or their family. Uh, when the, when those people say, "Look at me, I've got this," and that people go to say, "Well, you know what? That's stupid. That's just not cool." Like. For instance, uh, going on a motorcycle without a bike helmet. It's like, that's, that's not cool. Or like say smoke. I mean, that's not only very unhealthy for you, but it's also not cool at all. Or uh, these kind of things. Or uh, driving while you are drunk, these kind of things. So that is another target uh, audience that you just have to show them to do it differently. And then the last approach is indeed, it is illegal. So you have to ramp up law enforcement to make sure that people who buy it illegally start to feel that the chance of being caught becomes important. And therefore the risk of having that stuff is at one stage becomes too high to do it. So those are different approaches to address um, these different people, types of user groups. Some don't, don't know it's illegal, others that do, but buy it anyways. Exactly. And that's why it's important for people like you guys who do care to spread the word to others to get them to care. So, that's okay, it. it looks like we have a few more minutes here. So we're going to try to squeeze in as many of these last questions here that we can. Kirsten wants to know how long can an elephant live? Mm, good question. Uh, it depends a bit on uh, if they are living in, a, in an ecosystem, which is like a really rich of food, um, but they can live up to 70 years old in the wild. Wow. Our next one comes from Offshore Innovations. Want to know how many elephants are currently left in the wild? Uh, so on the African continent, the African elephant, there is about 400, between 400, 420,000 elephants left. Um, and as I mentioned before, you have two subspecies of uh, African elephants, the savanna elephant and the forest elephant. The forest elephant is by far the most threatened, uh, first of all, because there is there is less um, of that forest uh, where they, they less habitat for those animals than for the savanna elephants, but also they are much more hunted than in those uh, savanna ecosystems. So maybe of the, that species, nobody really knows, but maybe between 
uh, 60 and or 50 and 100,000 uh, and of the savanna elephants, uh, they take the rest. Um, with most of the African elephants remaining in Southern Africa. So pl places like South Africa, Botswana, Namibia, um, those are the, the, the key uh, elephant range states currently. Okay, our next question from IHM fourth graders. This is a great one. They wanna know what did, when did you get inspired to learn about and protect elephants? Well, already as a, as a small kid, I really liked just to be outside. I always liked to be in the forest. Um, and I like to look at insects and like, for instance, dung beetles. Um, and then I was like, wow, can you imagine being a dung beetle, not being in this little dung pile I can see here in my backyard in, in the Netherlands, but being in a dung pile, which is like uh, as big as my desk. Wow, if there is an animal that size. So I was always fascinated by, uh, um, by big animals and by uh, big wild places. So being in a forest and sneaking up on an elephant in the forest, and you're sure that you are the, the first one ever, ever see, uh, setting eye on that animal, just that dream uh, was always in the back of my, my head. And, and I always wanted to, to be part of that and to make sure that, uh, that those animals would be protected. Great, our next one is from Makeum, wants to know, can elephants grow new tusks? I know you kind of touched on that already, but. Yeah, no, that is indeed, uh, they cannot. So um, they have different, so they have uh, uh, molars. So that's our young molars there. Um, they grow new ones. So they can grow six times new molars in their lifetimes. And that is also the most common cause of death of elephants before humans started to kill them is they die in the end of their lives, mostly of hunger, when their last pair of, 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 uh, uh, of their back teeth fall out and they have no more teeth to chew all that vegetation. However, their tusks, they keep on growing their whole life and they only have one pair. If that one pair is broken or uh, otherwise damaged, um, it will never grow back, uh, which is different from um, uh, uh, a rhino horn rhino horn continues to grow so if you cut the top off it will keep on uh, growing but it is uh, a rhino horn also uh, it's just one horn that keeps on growing and it doesn't sort of fall off and grow back okay our next question is from kevin in miss bennett's class he wants to know how long are elephants pregnant for and how much do the babies weigh um they are pregnant for about, I think, 22 months or something like that. And uh, baby elephants, they weigh uh, as much as an adult adult human being when they are born. Wow. It's <laughs> a, <big, laughs> a big baby. It's a big baby. Um, <laughs> okay, so we've got a couple questions here that we're going to kind of combine into one to kind of wrap up here. Boz. So Jen would like to know, what is your favorite experience with elephants? Well, maybe my favorite experience once I was uh, um, in the forest that we were, we were looking for elephants and, and trying to count them via counting their dung. So uh, always hoping to see them, but hardly ever really seeing them because before you see them, they've already smelled you and they already run away. But once we were in this forest walking around and there was this thick patch of forest in front of us. And this Baka Pygmy guide that they, they was walking with said, there's this elephants there, elephants there. And I couldn't really see anything. So I started to crawl closer and closer. And then these guys behind me started to say, stop, stop, come back, you're close. And I was looking around and I didn't see anything. And I was looking at that really thick part of forest in front of me, thinking they were hiding there. And then I felt a little movement on my right. And I looked next to me. And there was this tiny little baby elephant next to his mommy and they were fast asleep. So they were maybe half a meter away from me and the mommy was fast asleep and the baby started to sort of wake up and with this tiny little trunk started to smell me. And then he sort of wake up and looked at me. He's like, what is this great strange creature? And he sort of woke up his mommy who was really very fast asleep. So she sort of woke up like, oh, what's going on here? And then she noticed that I was there and then she's there, oh, trumpeting away. And I was like, oh, 
running away. Uh, yeah, but that looking in the eye of that tiny little baby elephant who sort of woke up while I was just stupidly looking the other way and not seeing that they were just standing next to me was really one of the most beautiful moments. That baby elephant probably thought he was having a bad dream and <laughs> went and did what, what humans do. They went and woke up a parent to tell him about it. <laughs> well, I think that's a great question to wrap up with. So thank you so much to everyone that submitted questions. Um, before we wrap up for the day, we want to take a look at your answers to those last questions that we had on pigeonhole. So just as a reminder, we asked you guys to submit what action you would commit to in order to help protect elephants. So you can see our results there, Boz. We had a good majority say they would commit to using eco-friendly products. And then next was spreading the word to your family and friends, which is really great. And that's something that all of us can do just by having the conversation with the people we know. So thank you all for putting your your answer in there. And then we also asked you a trivia question. We wanted to know what was the closest relative to an elephant? So we had a lot of great answers submitted. You can see here, Boz, some people said hippo. We have woolly mammoth, rock hyrax, um, rhino, manatee. We have a couple manatees there. Triceratops, cows, hippos, giraffes. We got lots and lots of am answers. So. Boz, you want to reveal the answer? I'll stop sharing so you can you can be the give it away as to what the wow. answer is. Well, I see that there is all these good questions. Where can I show it? So yes, this tiny little an animal, which is like a, as big as two sides of my hands. A hyrax is the very closest relative of the elephant, as well as others. They said manatees. So there's, there are those sea cows, dudongs, or manatees. Those two different, complete different looking species living in complete different habitats. Uh, and this hyrax is really crazy. It's such a tiny little, and also where like you can climb, and it's a completely different. Uh, it's a, is the closest uh, relative to the elephant. So congratulations to many of you who got that right. I hope you didn't Google it, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, though, that such a little animal is the closest relative to such a big one. So yeah. again, thank you to everyone that joined us today, both watching and putting your questions in and answering the pigeonhole questions. Huge thanks to Boz also for joining us and sharing so much information about Africans. I know we all had a really great time. If any of you still have questions for Boz that we didn't have time to get to today, you can always email them to Wild Classroom at wwfus.org and we will do our best to pass those along to Boz and get some answers back to you. And just a reminder, teachers and parents, there is a crossword puzzle that is associated with today's presentation that you can find on the Conservation in the Classroom page right next to Boz's video. And you can also check out today's daily activities on the main Wild Classroom page all about African species. So thanks again, Boz. And to all those watching, we'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody.